Hi dear children. Welcome to one more session of Faith Chat. Hope you had a great week and we really loved the assignments that you sent to us. We will be making a separate video with all the assignments and to showcase your talent. It was really a beautiful experience going through these assignments. So dear children, welcome to another session and we've got some exciting sessions for you. A catechism class, bible lesson and other such exciting content. Hope you have a great time today with Faith Chat. We shall now begin our usual session with an action song. You're my superhero, you're my star, my best 
best friend, Jesus, you're my superhero, you're my star, my best friend, Jesus, you're my superhero, you're my star, my best friend. Hello everyone, I welcome you all today to this Catechism class. Let us begin today's class with a prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. Amen. Our God is truly a wonder-working, miraculous God, isn't He? There is nothing too big that He cannot do. What are some of the miracles that our God has done? He parted the Red Sea. He sent rivers in the desert. He healed the lame, the blind and the sick. Truly, our God is a mighty God, and He loves us so much that He sent us His wonderful, miraculous Holy Spirit to each one of us, to guide us, to protect us, to inspire us, and to teach us how to grow closer to Him. Whenever we are sad, or angry, or confused, we can pray to the Holy Spirit and He will definitely guide us. Our God has given the Holy Spirit to each and every one of us. So now, let us take some time and bow our heads and pray to the Holy Spirit. Dear Holy Spirit, we thank you for being with us. We thank you that you are always ready to guide us and protect us. We thank you for watching over our homes, for watching over our families and our friends, especially during this difficult time. We ask you for your gifts and for your fruits so that we can love God and everyone around us and so that we might always have the strength and the courage to do what is right. We thank you. We praise you. And we love you, dear Holy Spirit. Amen. Lives in me. Holy Spirit. 
hi i'm judith and i will be speaking with you on the topic who is jesus let's start with the story of creation in the beginning god created the heavens and the earth the mountains the seas the flowers trees birds the bees all of it right he created animals but he made man different from all of these creatures how he put us in charge of all of creation and he gave us something that we call free will which is the freedom to choose and the freedom to make decisions however man didn't choose to do what is right and what started out as adam and eve's original sin was passed down through the ages with mankind time and again choosing to do what is wrong now in the beginning god had a very personal relationship with adam and eve he lived in the garden with them he walked with them there are many times when you read genesis chapter 1 and 2 that god is seen speaking to adam and eve that is the kind of relationship that god wanted to have with mankind so even after adam and eve were banished from the garden of eden god began to reveal himself to mankind as civilization grew now in the old testament god was treated as almighty and all powerful as he should be and people's relationship with god was based on the laws and the commandments they worshiped him in his temple and they had a few times a day that they had to pray but that is it people used to believe in a god whom according to them was far far away in the heavens but that is not the kind of relationship that god wanted to have with his people he wanted to have a personal relationship with his people and so through the ages god revealed himself to mankind through the prophets if you look at the old testament there are so many prophets right from samuel elijah isaiah jeremiah daniel and so many others who preached to the people to turn away from their sins and turn to god but sin had really rooted itself into us human beings romans chapter 3 verse 23 says for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of god and this sin has consequences sin causes destruction and sin causes the death of us human beings and the death of our planet and we are a planet that is completely filled with brokenness right now and when god from the heavens looked down on his creation he weeped with sorrow because this is not the life that he wanted for his creation he wanted us to enjoy life in its abundance and he really needed to do something drastic to change the course of mankind and for us he gave the ultimate sacrifice god sent his only son jesus to the earth to build a permanent connection between the heavens and the earth a ladder that connected heaven and earth so that god could come down to the earth and so that he could take us up with him now the word for jesus coming down to the earth is incarnation meaning taken on flesh jesus who was spirit took on flesh and was born with us on this earth as a baby in a manger Now Jesus was fully human and fully divine. If he wasn't fully human, he wouldn't have been able to live with us like he did. And if he wasn't fully divine, he wouldn't have the ability to take us up to heaven with him. Jesus was a simple humble person. He was a carpenter and he lived a simple life. And yet this Jesus preached the kingdom of God. He gave us commandments, love one another as I have loved you. He taught us to turn the other cheek. He taught us about forgiveness and his teachings call us to a much higher standard of moral character. But Jesus lived that kind of life and he set an example for us. Jesus said, "I have come to give you life, life in all its abundance." From the minute that Jesus came to earth, he made an impact. Some people followed him while others opposed him. and when it comes to the climax at the passion on the cross it's like all forms of sin come to meet jesus we see it in judas's betrayal of jesus in peter denying jesus three times the apostles falling asleep while jesus was crying at the agony in the garden we also see the injustice of the pharisees and the jewish leaders we see the brutality of the roman guards and the worst of all we see people mocking jesus while he is suffering under the weight of the cross and when he is nailed to that cross all of human sin is drawn out during jesus's death and suffering and he dies crushed by the weight 
of our sins and yet as jesus was hanging on that cross he cries out to the lord father forgive them for they do not know what they are doing and he says as he breathes his last it is finished and by saying that what does he mean he means that god's plan for the salvation of mankind is finished you know jesus could have had the angels come and save him when he was suffering that pain but he stayed on that cross for the love of you and for me in his resurrection jesus is love conquers all evil and when jesus met his apostles after that he said to them shalom peace be with you to all those people who abandoned him and ran away during his suffering jesus said peace be with you his love is enough to swallow all the sin of the world there is no greater love than this that god took on flesh came and lived amongst us and died for us and when doing so he took on all the dysfunction the sin the dirt of the world he took it upon himself and he swallowed all of it in his forgiveness nothing can separate us from the love of christ and if i have to describe jesus in one word for you it is this Jesus is our savior. He saved us. He saves us today and he continues to save us. We have a savior to look up to. Now as an activity for this week, I'm going to ask you to read two Bible verses. One is John chapter 3 verse 16 and the second is Isaiah chapter 53 verse 5. Read them, pray about it and reflect on it for a while. and whatever you think of whatever thoughts you have whatever feelings you have after reading these verses just share them in the comment section a little story on forgiveness it was 7 am and the sound of sasha's alarm clock reminded her of the excitement this school day would bring. Yeah! Sasha shouted. It was show and tell day in her second grade class and she could hardly wait to share the special birthday necklace that her grandmother had given her. Sasha darted to the bathroom to wash her face and brush her teeth. She was already dressed when her mother checked in on her. "Wow, look at you. You are up all by yourself. I guess you are being more responsible now that you are 8 years old." "Oh, mom, don't be silly." Sasha laughed. I'm just really excited about today. I can't wait to show everyone the special cross necklace that grandma gave me. The beads make it so pretty. Okay, sweetie, said Sasha's mom. Just remember to take it off before recess and put it in your backpack like we discussed. Okay, mom. Sasha shouted as she whooshed down the stairs for breakfast. And that's why this necklace is so special. Sasha beamed as she showed the class the eight beautiful beads on the necklace at the end of her show and tell presentation. As Sasha returned to her seat, Mrs. Griffin asked the class to clear their desks before recess. Sasha remembered what her mother said and tucked the necklace safely into her backpack. All the children went outside to play except for Rachel and Blake who had finished their writing assignment before going out. We are finished with today's maths problems. Mrs. Griffin told the class at the end of the school day. It's time to go home now. So, please pack your bags and prepare for dismissal. As Mrs. Griffin raised the board, 
she was startled by a frantic cry oh no cried sasha what happened to the beads on my necklace sasha's eyes began to well up with tears i put my necklace safely away in my bag before recess but now all the beads are gone sasha looked very very sad class does anyone know what happened to sasha's necklace mrs griffin asked all the students shook their head no except for rachel and blake they were both looking down at their shoes rachel blake is there something you want to share mrs griffin asked they continued to look away sheepishly mrs griffin dismissed the other students and asked rachel and blake to stay behind along with sasha once the other students left rachel blurted out oh mrs griffin i'm so sorry the necklace was so pretty that i wanted to see it again so i pulled the necklace from sasha's backpack while she was at recess blake spoke up also mrs griffin i'm really sorry too when rachel got the necklace from sasha's bag i began teasing her because i didn't see why the necklace was so special when i grabbed it from rachel the necklace fell to the floor and the beads came off well mrs griffin said you both know that it's not right to take something that belongs to someone else i know you didn't mean to break the beads off but they are gone and now sasha is very upset do you know where the beads are blake pointed to his desk they are inside my desk he said quietly mrs griffin got the beads from the desk and smiled look sasha the beads didn't break your necklace can be fixed sasha sighed with relief but she was still very mad blake and rachel looked at sasha we are very sorry for what we did to your necklace sasha stared down at the necklace her brow was still furrowed and she was silent for what seemed like an eternity suddenly sasha looked up at blake and rachel with a big smile they were both puzzled you're not mad anymore sasha rachel asked well i guess i'm still a little mad but i just remembered something grandma told me and i now understand what she means so i'm smiling because my necklace means even more to me now all because of what you did rachel and blake were really confused now you see i learned from grandma that the cross is special because jesus died on the cross so that my sins can be forgiven even though he didn't do anything wrong he died for me and for all of us the only thing he asks is that i forgive others who do wrong things to me just like i have been forgiven so i forgive you now i understand what this cross means it's not the beads that make it special it is what jesus did that makes it special mrs griffin smiled very proudly at her three students they learned a lesson on that day that was more important than anything she could have taught them forgive others as jesus has forgiven you
Jacob was the son of Isaac and the grandson of Abraham. He had a twin brother Esau. One day Jacob tricked his father into giving him a blessing that had been promised to Esau. Esau became so angry that he planned to kill his brother. When Jacob found out about Esau's plan, he left the house of his father for another country. He walked the entire day. As night was falling, he lay down against a stone and fell asleep on that very spot. Then Jacob had a dream. He saw a ladder going up from the earth until its top touched the heaven. God's angels were moving up and down the ladder, and Jacob heard the voice of the Lord saying, I am the God of Abraham and Isaac. The land on which you lie I shall give to you, to you and your children and your children's children. They shall fill the earth and they shall be blessed. I am with you and will not desert you. Jacob awoke. He was afraid and he cried out, How wonderful is this place! Truly the Lord is here and I did not know it. This place is a house of God, the door to heaven. Jacob took the stone on which he had slept and set it up as a memorial, and he called that place Bethel, which means the house of God. Later, God said to Jacob, Your name shall no longer be Jacob, but Israel, and you shall be the father of many nations. Hola, I hope you had a wonderful week. Well, now it's time to learn about some new things. So welcome back to Let's Saint a Story. Here we are at the gates of heaven. In the center, we have St. John Bosco, who is the father of youngsters. Towards the left, we have St. Francis of Assisi, who, as you recall, is a patron saint of animals, birds and nature. Today, they will be joined by the new saint who we will be meeting. For those of you who took part in the activity called Who's That Saint last week, and if you are able to figure out who the saint is that we are going to meet today, congratulations! If you weren't able to figure out who the saint is, here's your chance to meet the saint and get to know more about him. So let's go ahead. Let's meet the saint and make a new friend. So this is going to be a normal conversation with the saint. Imagine you are meeting the saint at a hotel or at a park, trying to get to know more about him. So you just ask a few questions and you get to know their details, their life story and try connecting with them. So let's begin. A casual encounter. This is a person you see in front of you. He looks enlightened and composed, a bit intimidating, but he would still be willing to be our friend. So let's go ahead, let's ask him a few questions. You begin by saying, Hey, I'm so glad to be meeting you. May I know your name? To which the saint replies, Greetings. My name is San Ignatio de Loyola, but I am also popularly known as St. Ignatius of Loyola. Tell me more about your childhood and your youthful days. 
I was born in the ancestral castle of Loyola's in the Basque province of Guipuscoa on the 23rd of October 1491. I was the youngest of 13 children in my family. My mother had passed away when I was just 7 years old. I was then raised by a lady named Maria who was the wife of a blacksmith. I was a member of the local aristocracy. I was very ambitious and always dreamed of becoming a great leader. I even used to read a lot as a child and a youth. In my younger days, I served as a page to the local treasurer in the castle of Loyola. I used to hang out with the wealthy people and this is where I developed a liking towards the possession of materialistic goods. One day, I got the opportunity to serve as a soldier in the Spanish army. As soon as I got this opportunity, I went in for it, as it had been my ambition to lead people. That sounds so interesting. What about your days as a soldier? I was quite a good soldier actually. I led the Spanish army into various battles. But not all days can be good days, right? During one of our battles with a friend, I became severely wounded in battle. A cannonball had crushed my leg. I was in no position to fight and my friends carried me off. I was placed under the care of a doctor and my leg had begun to heal. This is a point where my life started to make a turn for the better. How so? Well, as I was healing, there was a nurse who used to take care of me. I got really bored as I had to just lie on bed waiting to heal. So, one day, I asked the nurse for some books. She asked the head nurse and gave me two books to read, The Life of Christ and A Collection of Saint Stories. I began reading these books and I became so inspired by Christ and the saints that I wanted to change my ways from this point in my life. What did you do once you were fully healed? Once I was healed, I began to follow the ways of Christ. I was a different man now. I began to show utmost dedication to Christ. I lived a life of utter poverty, away from all the materialistic ways of living. I used to work in a hospital and beg at the same time to fend off for my living. I began to partake in spiritual exercises to better understand my connection with Christ and better myself to fully realize this beautiful connection that Christ has with us. How did your journey to sainthood begin? Well, I started to attend classes at universities to better my understanding on various subjects, these subjects being Latin, philosophy and theology. While studying at these universities, I began to talk and teach about theology to people even though I didn't have a degree. Christ had given me the understanding required to teach these subjects. After having completed my studies in Spain, I went on to the University of saint Paul in Paris when I was 38 years old. This is where I met two of the most important people in my life, Peter Faber and Francis Xavier. I, along with Peter and Francis, went on to form the Society of Jesus, also known as the Jesuit Society. We had quite a few followers at a time and we inspired many others. To be honest, Francis Xavier was actually a bit doubtful on joining the order. One day, I remember telling him this, What does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and yet loses his soul? This phrase inspired Francis, leading him to join the society. Francis Xavier then went on to preach in India, but that's another story for another day. Me and many of my companions were ordained as priests on June 24, 1537. I was beatified by Pope Paul V in 1609 and canonized by Pope Gregory XV in 1622. In 1922, I was declared the patron of all spiritual retreats 
by Pope Pius XI. When I died on July 31st, 1556, the Jesuit order had close to 1000 Jesuits divided into 12 provinces. That's such a great story. What should I do to become more like you? All you have to do, my friend, is live a simple life away from all the riches of the world. Dedicate yourself completely to Christ. Follow the spiritual exercises that I have been following. The spiritual exercises are a set of Christian meditations, contemplations, and prayers written by me. I'm pretty sure you can find these prayers by searching either on the internet or in a Christian library. Last but not the least, have a strong faith in Christ. If you have that faith, no one will be able to sway you away. It was really great meeting you, Saint Ignatius. It was delightful meeting you too. Keep praying for me and pray to me. I too will be praying for you from up above. Before I leave, I would like to leave you with this quote, the very same quote that I gave to Francis Xavier. What does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and yet loses his soul? Great guy! You made a friend in Saint Ignatius de Loyola. But remember this: it is what you learn that counts. Getting to know the saint, learning from his life, taking all these virtues that you learn from the saint, and incorporate them into your own lives. Live a better life, and you too can be a saint just like him. This brings us back to the gates of heaven. So we have two saints that we had talked about previously and now they are joined by Saint Ignatius de Loyola. Now this brings us to the activity called Who's that saint? Towards the left there is a silhouette of a saint and towards the right you have a clue related to the silhouette. So using the silhouette on the left and the clue on the right You need to figure out who the saint is. The clue is the little flower of Jesus. If you figure out who the saint is, you can type the answer in the comment section below. If you are still not able to figure out, tune in next week to learn more about the saint. Thank you and saint in your life. So dear children, I hope you had a great time. The resources of this week too will be sent to you by mail and by WhatsApp. Hope you will do your assignments and do your homework like you've already done over the past few weeks and you will send it to us by the email ID that has already been given to you. So children, have a great week ahead and hope you have a really blessed time. God bless.